हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कवर ऑल द कंटेंट्स ऑफ युगलिना फर्स्ट वन विद इन ऑल दिस कंटेंट्स इज हैबिट एंड हैबिटेट ऑफ युगलिना विरिडिस हैबिट एंड हैबिटेट ऑफ युगलिना विरिडिस युगलिना विरिडिस इज फाउंड इन अबंडेंस ऑन द सरफेस ऑफ फ्रेश वाटर पॉन्ड्स समटाइम्स द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ युगलिना विरिडिस बिकम सो डेंस that the water appears green on the surface due to green color of euglena in the laboratory euglena is cultured by introducing some collected euglena into a culture medium prepared by boiling cow or horse tongue in distilled water structure of euglena viridis euglena viridis is spindle shaped in appearance the front end is blunt while the back end is pointed the average body length is about 40 to 50 microns into into 14 to 20 microns the outer limiting surface or pellicle is firm elastic and gives the animal a more or less definite shape the pellicle is marked by delicate and spiral stripes that can be seen with difficulty underneath the pellicle are some elastic fibers arranged diagonally and longitudinally the pellicle is closely adhered to by a plasma membrane on the inner side within the plasma membrane is the normal mass of differentiated cytoplasm into the outer ectoplasm and inner endoplasm endoplasm ectoplasm is thin non granular or and more sol in nature whereas endoplasm is granular blank and more gel in nature this diagram is for euglena viridis which briefly describes disposition of its chloroplasts so these are the parts of euglena viridis radiating disposition of its chloroplast first one is blepharoplast stigma then after stigma flagellum gullet photorespirator reservoir contractile vacuole then nu nucleolus within nucleus chloroplast contractile fibers paramyelum granules pellicle euglena viridis the radiated nature of its chloroplast this defines the same diagram we just saw the nucleus of euglena is large in its shape spherical and almost centrally located it is located in a clear zone between the chloroplast there are many irradiated chloroplast containing chlorophyll suspended in the cytoplasm chloroplast are elongated or oval in appearance a peculiar type of animal starch called paramyelum is scattered throughout the cytoplasm in the form of grains sometimes an increase in the number of paramyelum bodies is seen that they almost cover the chloroplast when such euglena are kept in the dark for several days the number of paramyelum bodies is reduced euglena like green plants can synthesize carbohydrate food by photosynthesis one to several contractile vacuoles are located at the anterior end and close to the reservoir into which the products of the contractile vacuole are emptied all these views are euglena viridis after various sources view 1 is enlarged view of the anterior end view b is magnified view of flagellum then c is arrangement of chloroplast in view 1 either a there is plasmalum gullet pigment spot blepharoplast photoreceptor contract and contractile vacuole then view b in view b axoneme seat and in view c chloroplast we can see chloroplast at the anterior end there is a narrow depression the gullet or cytopharynx which leads to a flag shaped and non contractile reservoir 
the inner side of the pellicle in the gullet region has a pair of ridges that acts as sphincter muscle near the base of the gullet there is a large pigment spot or may be called stigma the stigma is bright red in color and is composed of small granules of carotenoid pigments embedded in a colorless stroma a single flagellum equal to the length of the body exits through the gullet the flagellum splits into two in the middle of the reservoir and the two roots pass into two compact basal granules or blepharoplast located in the cytoplasm below the base of the reservoir some people think that there are two flagella one short and one long each arises separately from two blepharoplast and the shorter one unites with the longer one immediately after its origin the long flagellum is thick the flagellum is composed of two parts an elastic axillary filament the axon composed of many filaments and a contractile cytoplasmic sheath surrounding the axon near the stigma there is a lens like thickening or photoreceptor in the root of the flagellum recent studies have shown that the stigma acts as a shield for photoreceptors when a euglena rotates on its long axis the presence of a stigma allows light to strike the photoreceptors only from the sides euglena viridis try to orient itself in such a way as to periodically expose the photoreceptors